In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome back, as my colleague said. Welcome to St. James Cathedral on this beautiful Sunday morning. And if it's your first time with us, we are so delighted you are here. Today marks the beginning of another program year where we come together in Christ's name to worship and to seek deeper understanding of the divine, to find strength and companionship in one another, to offer once again of ourselves and ask God to make of our self-offering a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. And all of that before noon. <laughs> like the youngest of our members who've already entered into this ritual of return in their back-to-school rituals, we come together today to this cathedral's kickoff Sunday, perhaps wondering what this new year might bring. We come together to ponder anew what the Almighty can do, to quote the hymnal, who in God's love does sustain us. And after a season where we have been somewhat dispersed by travel and other factors, we look again and we gather again and look ahead to another season of rebuilding restoration and renewal of our vocation as a people who are serving God in the world, in this place, from this place. Christian formation opportunities for our adults and our youngest members swing back into gear this week. We've just come off of an ice cream Sunday, Sunday social with our families of school-aged children. Our Invite Welcome Connect team has organized for us a low-key engagement fair following immediately after this service in the coffee hour. And we have all those here who are in some way seeking a little bit deeper involvement in common life and seeking to find those points of connection. Yesterday in this very space where we are today, we had several dozen members of our liturgical ministry teams, the choir, the acolytes, some of the acolytes, some of the altar guild, and in order to prepare for us for this day for the fullness of our fall worship, which ended with a luncheon celebrating Hock Wong's 43rd straight season singing with the cathedral choir. Hock, are you here? You must be. You're so faithful. Please stand up. I see fingers. Where are you? Hawk Wong, please stand up. He's not doing, please stand up, yes. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, as we were at the luncheon, and of course I like to make everything about me, so I said 43 years, what does that mean in my life? And as I said, when he started singing in the choir here in this space, I was graduating from high school. Since that time, I've managed uh, to have two degrees, two marriages, four children, um, a, a career across a few cities and all that, and all, every single Sunday, Hawk was in this place singing. And of course, I asked the rest of the choir, can you guys think about what this means in your life? And I asked, first of all, how many of you were alive when he started? And a surprisingly small <laughs> number of hands went up. So um, it is wonderful to have that witness to that faithfulness. But do you know, at the same event, at the table I was sitting at, there were two people who've joined us literally in the last week. And that's how the church is. We come here, each of us responding to God's invitation in our life, responding to God's call to us as an individual and the call to us as a community. We will continue this day again, this evening, our young adults, our 20s and 30s group will gather for the first time this season to share a meal and once again welcome one another into friendship in Christ. And if you're a young adult and you're hearing that, you're here or you're online, yes, this means you, all are invited, please come back. It has been and continues to be a wonderful weekend here where our community is again coming alive with the joy, just the joy of coming together in Christ's name. And the gospel appointed for today gives us a reflection 
on what appears to be a section from Jesus's HR manual on church member misconduct. So I don't know if you can remember all the way back to the sermon or back to the gospel from here, but uh, Jesus, it's, it's not exactly the most inspiring uh, bit of, of scripture for today, except that in today's appointed section of Matthew's gospel, Jesus is leading us through, while an oddly practical sort of series of steps and, and, and a process for us to deal with one another, when one of us goes a little bit off the rails, he is showing us how to recover when we human beings act like human beings. Pull them aside, he says first. Try to restore that balance in the simplest way, and if that's no good, then involve a few more folks, and if that's no good, then involve a few more, even the whole church, to try and call back somebody from the brink and to restore them to relationship with the wider body. You are the body, he says, that defines the contours of the church, who, who defines the contours of my body, says Jesus. You are the ones who construct it and to show it to the world. You are the ones who tend to it when it is unwell. You are the ones who work together to increase its health and vitality. And into this mix, he says non-anxiously, into this mix will come moments of challenge along with moments of deep grace. It is not that we have conflict that is a concern to Jesus, but how we have conflict, says Jesus. How do we, you and I, engage in real and consequential differences of thought or practice? For he knows that the church is made up of us human beings and that we can be pretty predictable in our imperfect behaviors. And he wants us to know that wherever we gather together in his name, he will be there with us. Are we gathered in his name? Yes. Are there two or three of us? Quite a few more. Jesus is here with us today. He wants us to act like it. At the last service, the nine o'clock, where many of our families with young children attend, I asked the younger members if there was any difference in the way that they speak to their siblings when it's just them versus when they know that their parents or teachers or other adults are within earshot. And many of them were honest enough to acknowledge that they act differently with one another when they know that management is in the room. Jesus probably knew that too, that many of the challenges that can arise in a life of community such as ours could be remedied by an awareness that whenever we gather in Christ's name, just two or three of us, Jesus is here. And so he is here with us today in our community and in the new faces that join us every day here. And as we work to fashion this community that gathers in Christ's name, the gospel reassures us that tension, even loving confrontation, is a normal part of our lives together, not a sign that something has gone horribly wrong, but a sign that we are human and that we strive for the greater gifts, and we strive to be vehicles of God's grace. So if Matthew's gospel from today is Jesus giving us the HR manual. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, gives us the code of conduct, summarizing that we are to strive at all times for the cardinal virtue of our community, and that is love of our neighbor. Love of our neighbor. Love the neighbor, he says, in its fullness. It is the fullness and it is the fulfillment of the law. How we are with one another in here, says Paul, is not only for its own sake, but also for how God's light then shows up in the world around us. And he uses that wonderful poetry, scatter the darkness and put on the armor of light. In the darkness that surrounds us out there, in the darkness that encroaches on all of us out there. The world needs light. 
The world doesn't need a fractured and squabbling version of Christ's body. It needs a reconciled church, a reconciled community, striving always to love the neighbor. And even for the one in the gospel, even the one who cannot be brought back into reconciliation, Jesus doesn't say, well, hate them. He says, treat them as the tax collector, treat them as one outside, as a Gentile. And how does Jesus treat those people? Do we remember? He loves them too. It's just more of an invitation back in. So in this darkness that surrounds, we are to have our own act together so that we can shine Christ's light in the world, putting on the armor of light, putting on Christ, and being that light in a world of questionable light sometimes. And this whole thing about wearing Christ reminded me as my final thought for today. Um, I grew up in a time where there weren't as many options and everybody who watched TV would never miss any of the award ceremonies. I know some of you are with me on that and people would quite uh, regularly watch the red carpet arrivals and there came to be a time or a generation or so where the red carpet arrivals would be met by people holding microphones who would ask, who are you wearing? Kind of an annoying question, but who are you wearing so that we could hear who the designer was? And that came back to me today as I thought about Paul's words. For us as individuals and as a community in this particular church, every time we gather in Christ's name, every time we walk into this sanctuary, we do also get to walk a red carpet. And so, I think that each time you and I come and walk this particular red carpet, whether it's walking in or walking out, I'd like us all to ask ourselves the question, who am I wearing? Who am I wearing? By God's grace, let your answer always be Christ. By God's grace, let it always be that you are wearing Christ's light, scattering the darkness, showing love of neighbor above all things, and transforming the world around us. Amen.